Hey everyone, so AI cinema came barreling out of the gates at this year's Venice Film Festival. We're gonna take a look at all the news that came out of that. Plus, we've got a look at some recent updates from Pika, the AI video generator, and a cool mid-journey technique that you're definitely gonna to wanna to try out. Plus, I've got two other really neat examples of AI video to video. All right, let's dive in. First up was a presentation by Fable Studios showcasing their AI showrunner technology. You might remember that whole AI showrunner thing from that wholly generated AI South Park episode or episodes that were going around just recently. I did do a whole video about the South Park thing, but because of the stupid YouTube invalid traffic glitch, um, I had to remove it just in case. I'm gonna put it up on a second channel. That link will be below. So Fable is the studio behind the simulation, which is the platform that AI showrunner works on. It also serves as kind of a faux company with a fake CEO uh, running the simulation. I can assure you that Fable Studio is a real studio and that can more or less be proven by the fact that they held a panel at the Venice Film Festival. Now I know that there are still gonna be some holdouts that are convinced this is a hoax, but um, this is not an AI generated image. Those are real people. This is a real presentation. Well, at the Venice Film Festival, Fable Studios premiered their AI generated series, Thistle Gulch, that is set in the simulation of an old west town with dynamic AI characters seeking a brighter future. And yes, all of that seems very much like the first season of Westworld. No footage from Thistle Gulf yet, but we do have footage from a film that was created with the assistance of AI that premiered at the Venice Film Festival from filmmaker Harmony Corinne. Harmony Corinne is a filmmaker probably best known for 2012's Spring Breakers. Side note, and I guess I can mention it because it's been forever and I never signed an NDA, uh, but I once actually wrote a pitch for a Spring Breakers animated series. It never went anywhere, presumably because somebody up the chain said, why would we do this? Anyhow, back to Venice and Harmony Corinne. Uh, Harmony debuted his new film, Agro Drift, which is an experimental film that was shot with thermal cameras to give it a very, very unique look. Agro Drift is about a hitman named Bo who is confronting his literal inner demon. So there isn't a ton of material out on Agro Drift. I have cobbled together what is out there. Uh, this is a 15 second clip that kind of really showcases the look of the thermal cameras that Corinne used for his film along with a very 80s style font. Overall, the look of the film is supposed to represent something of being inside of a video game. And his new studio, Edgelord, is focused on using technology to create, quote, something we don't quite have words for yet. All of which is in response to what he calls, quote, the demolished attention span of younger people. I haven't seen the film yet, so I don't have a hard look or a take on what AI tools were utilized in the making of the film. But looking at some clips from some other Edgelord projects definitely shows a generative AI look to most of them. This is definitely, you know, video to video. Some very nice 3D compositing here. Uh, I'm not sure if that character that stands up is a Mixamo pose. Um, you guys might have to let me know about that. Um, but yeah, this looks really, really nice. And another clip from a short film that they did called Xandra. Uh, this very much has all of the telltale signs of a stable diffusion workflow. And finally, there was The Red from Pillars, a new AI studio from Scott Lighthizer and Katya Alexander. There is no footage from this film either, but Scott Lighthizer did burst onto the AI cinema scene fairly early on. He posted this video, which you might remember, it did go pretty wide, uh, utilizing EBSynth for this as kind of a proof of concept. So it is very nice to see Scott's work paying off. In more AI video news, Pika has unrolled an update with two new features. One of which is a real game changer because it allows for 24 frames a second. The previous cap for Pika was eight frames a second. And while there were a couple of workarounds that you could kind of fudge a little bit, that eight frames a second did lead to some fairly like kind of stuttery and jittery videos. For example, this is cinematic ocean, waves breaking on the shore. And at eight frames a second, it looks like this. So yeah, I mean, it's okay. Um, but now that we have 24 frames a second, it looks like this, which is obviously much smoother and is much more pleasant to look at. 
It works with both text prompting and with image prompting. All you need to do is issue the command dash dash FPS and any number between eight and 24. Uh, here's another example uh, at eight frames a second. This was based off of a mid journey image that I rolled up earlier this morning that was, I guess, kind of lightly inspired by the bear, which I've been finally getting caught up on. That show is pretty great. And here it is now at 24 frames a second where you can clearly see the motion is much smoother. It much more buys as a real video. There's also a new animate command, which you can issue with forward slash animate. Uh, running it just gives you an image dialog box, uh, drag an image in and it will animate it for you. So here is an image that I rolled up in mid journey, uh, kind of has a very light sort of James Jean look to it. Animated in Pika, we get this, which is nice. It's a nice little animation. I will say that I think Animate really shines with kind of atmospheric, environmental, kind of big background designs uh, when you want to add just a little life, like kind of creating a moving environment. All in all, Pika has really been crushing it lately. Their model has improved a lot since launch. Uh, so I am going to circle back later on this week and do a full deep dive into Pika. We'll go over pretty much everything that there is to know about it. It's pretty much going to be one of my typical kind of ultimate lesson deep dive kind of videos. So if you don't want to miss that, please do make sure that you have the subscribe button hit. Next up is a pretty interesting technique that I've seen floating around Twitter recently. I don't know who started it. I saw it first from at Nick Floats, so I guess I'll credit him. But Nick throws back to retro punk AI. So yeah, like I said, this thing is just kind of going around. But it is really cool because it utilizes the stop command dash dash stop, which is something that I don't know. Most people don't have an artistic use for necessarily. So we'll begin with a simple enough prompt. This is photograph Instagram model. Since this is an upscaled image, I'm going to go over here and just hit the envelope button, which, as most of you know, will have the mid journey bot then message you with the seed number. In case you haven't been through that process, essentially the mid journey bot will slide into your DMs uh, and you'll get a message that looks a little bit like this. It'll let you know what the job ID is and then what the seed is as well. So you're going to copy the seed number, head back over to mid journey, use the same prompt with the seed number by issuing dash dash seed and then the number uh, and then follow that up with dash dash stop with a value of 20. Now, as we went over in my dash dash video, which covers every dash dash perimeter in mid journey, uh, dash dash stop uh, kind of does what it says. It stops the generation of the image. So by issuing dash dash stop at 20, it's basically saying after 20 stops, stop generating. What you end up with is kind of a blobby mess that looks like this. So under normal circumstances, this is pretty unusable. Um, it's interesting. It looks like a, the beginnings of Harley Quinn up here. And yeah, we'll take one of these images and upscale it. Uh, but what's interesting is what you can do from here is hit the very subtle button. So utilizing very subtle, I just prompted in Los Angeles sunset and ended up with this. It's kind of a cool image. Um, definitely not something that you would necessarily prompt for, right? So now let's take it a step further using very region. Uh, I just highlighted this area and wrote backpacker hiking on a hill, looking at the sky sunset and ran it. And we end up with this image, which I think is pretty interesting. You know, we've got our hiker. Obviously, you can't see her face. She's facing out to the city and the sky and pointed back towards us. The viewer is this sort of impression of a face. Uh, we know it's a face because we put it there. From there, we can kind of keep going with it. I took this image of Pacific Northwest woods and brought it back to our hiker in the clouds, taking our image of the trees and using that as just an image reference and popping it here, we ended up with this image. So yeah, that has definitely come a long way from our original Instagram model. And what's really great about this is now you can take the seed number from this and just start the whole process over again. Um, I think when you don't have something particularly intentional in mind and are just exploring, this is a really fun and interesting technique. Moving on, here are two examples from Gen 1. First up is a video from John Finger. Let's do a, let's do a little film. Okay. Um, okay, we start out with like a senator and he's on the phone and he's in his car. And he's just listening. And on the other side, we have his wife. And she's yelling at him. You don't understand what it's like. I'm home all year round. You're never around. This is a two-way street and you're not there for that. side of the street. That side of the road, whatever. Anyway, and then she, we cut back to the senator and the senator says, 
I'm at the event. So the link to the full video is down below. It's about three minutes long. I really highly recommend you watch it because it's just a lot of fun. There's a lot of charm in this watching like these two guys just kind of develop a full story. And it does become a full story by the end of it really just in real time and on the fly. Next up, we have our old friend, Martin Harlan, who we have featured on the channel before. He was the one that was responsible for the Snap video. And I do hope that I'm pronouncing his last name right. So he put together this kind of cute nature documentary, uh, but what's really interesting is how he ended up with two characters in his video. It's a really simple trick. I don't know if you caught it already, um, but you can attain this shot simply by using a mirror. I mean, it's the most low tech solution of all time, but it actually works. And I think it really just goes to show uh, how much ingenuity there is in the AI video community. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed today's video. My thanks very much to everyone who has joined the Patreon in the last few weeks. If you'd like to help support the channel, the link to it is down below. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim. And again, a big thanks to all of these guys.